welcome back to the channel. Today's discussion is on a post that we saw on social media asking people a choice to decide between A, 850 credit score, B, two, five, six million dollars, C, 4,000 a week. For life. For life. This question has come up several times on social media and there are thousands of, of people commenting on their choices. So I wanted to bring this up because we, um, we had a video last week that we talked about the credit cards and credit score. So you'll see a little of the continuation here, focusing more on these options and what would be your option if you were giving these options. Yeah, I mean, what, would, what would you do? Right, so sweetheart, Mm -hmm. If someone gave you the option, what would you choose? I know what I would che choose. Well, if it's two, five, or six million dollars, let's just go with the two million dollars. I would probably take the four thousand a week. The eight fifty credit score wouldn't mean anything to me at that point. Okay, because. 4000 a week. If for whatever reason your lifestyle is so crazy you can't live on 4000 a week, you already got problems. Your credit score is the least of your issues. Okay. Um, uh, one, right before you finish, I'm sorry. Let me put this out here. Disclaimer, we are not financial advisors. No, this is my dumbass opinion. This is opinion. just our opinion on the topic at hand. Now, back to your... So, yeah, if it's 4000 a week for life, I would take that because if... My credit isn't that good. There's no reason I couldn't fix it with four thousand dollars a week. Okay. Especially if I'm working, which the smart person would probably keep working if they had a decent job. If they had a job they hated. Yeah, it might take some time off, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you probably keep working, start saving some money because it's gonna it's gonna help you out in the long run. Two million bucks. It would take uh, was like nine years to earn the two million bucks at four thousand a week. Which sounds like a long time, but when you think about it, if someone gave you, just handed you $2 million, you've never had that much money in your life, you, you're going to mess it up. Like, there's a good chance you're going to mess it up. Unless you got some really good people behind you, helping you out and not begging you for money, you, like, you, you, there's a good chance you're going to mess that money up. Okay. And then it's gone. So if someone gave me those options, I'd take the $4,000 a week because I feel like, I don't know taking the money up front I'd end up messing it up and four grand a week I should be able to fix any bad credit I got if I can't my lifestyle is already messed up okay so I agree with Steve on the four thousand a week now what I would like to do is go through the option now option one is the credit score now do you need an 850 credit score to purchase small items large items no you do not you just need a decent credit score, whether that is, it can be 550, it can be 600, 650, 700. As long as you have some type of credit, most likely you would be able to purchase these items. Mm -hmm. Now, APR and your percentage rate may be a little higher, which is your interest rate against your purchase. Then it would be if you had an 850 credit score. Now, as I stated before, having an 850 credit score will give you lower interest rates when you're purchasing a home, mm -hmm. a car, a bank loan. So yes, that option to have an 850 credit score, it's an option. But do you need it? Not necessarily. Yeah. And it, the thing is, how often do you purchase a home or a car or something where your credit score, your interest rate is really relevant? It's like, think about what I'm saying. Like, smaller items that you might purchase on a credit card, your credit card, when you get it, it's going to have a set it's a interest fixed, rate. It doesn't it's a matter. Fixed rate. It doesn't matter what your credit score is. Right. Now, they might give you a higher limit. If you have a higher credit right. score. Yes. But otherwise, it doesn't change, you know, the rate that you're paying. So, let's, well, unless you're buying a new house every week. No, with a credit card. Sometimes well, you, you Yeah, I'm just, what I'm saying is that, like, for big purchases, yes. Yes. You, you need a better credit score for a lower interest rate, but how much you actually need to buy those items for that to really matter. Right, because you can 
pretty much if you have cash, you can just pay for it for cash if it's a small item. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to option B. Two million dollars. You brought up people will most likely mess up two million dollars. Yeah. It's it's the same with it. Do, it doesn't matter who the person is. I'm not I'm not talking about like oh black people versus no 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 people in general. If yes. you hand them something that they've never had a lot of a lot of they don't know exactly how to deal with it unless they've got some really good people around them right and or just some really good sense. There are people that have, out there really good sense, and there are people out there who think have good sense until you give them two million dollars. You mean financial sense, <laughs> right? Just good sense, yeah, you good get, financial sense. Yes. So you think, yeah, this person's pretty good with money, and then someone hands them. $2 million, $2. and all of a sudden, they got fifty grand. Now, granted, taking this option isn't a bad thing. You just have to be have to know what to do with it. strategic yeah. on how to make financial, good financial decisions that will not lead you back to where you started. Right. Let that money make money for you. Whatever it is, but you know, get, <laughs> get the right people in your corner and not right. people who are just looking like, like this. You know, yes. Can I have? Can I have? Because when you do get $2 million, now... You like he said, your circle would become bigger than what it was when you were broke and when you didn't have two million dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, when you didn't have two million dollars, you may have two or three friends. Then all of a sudden, people find out you have two million dollars. Hey, your phone start ringing. People start mm-hmm. showing up that you hadn't seen in years, and like, hey, buddy, and you're like, buddy, I haven't seen you in fifteen years. What's up? Yeah. So many people who win the lottery wind up or end up back where they started yeah or worse um more money more problems it's, yes it's it's a real thing it's a real thing i just if you what's more stressful having two million dollars and not really knowing how to handle two million dollars or getting paid four thousand dollars a week one of them is stressful and one of them isn't well yes because <laughs> I was just thinking, if someone had handed you two million dollars, you have all this money, and now you got to think about what to do with it, you yeah. know. And you, if you, let's just say, if you hit the lottery, you got to deal with taxes because they take a good percentage yeah. of that. And then if you were already gambling, yeah, if you're already the type of person that was, yeah, you're going to gamble that two million dollars because in your mind, you just won two million dollars. You're no going to lost to you. Huh? It's no loss to you. No, you know? but you're going to think about trying to win more. Yeah. You're always chasing it. So I say all that to say this. It's not like someone who's getting $4,000 a week can't mess that up too. Well, yeah. I, it's, we, I told, it's totally fair to say that. Yeah, but However, we haven't got to that point yet. We still have <laughs> $2 million. Let's, let's continue. Okay. So when you have $2 million and we're talking about your circle getting bigger and you you may feel obligated to lend money. Don't. Yeah. If you didn't have money to lend before those people sh- showed up, you don't have money now. Yeah, and you're giving money. You're not lending it because they ain't giving it back. Yeah. And also overspending. When you have $2 million, you will overspend if you're not thinking because you, you're going to say, right. oh, I got all this money. I can buy this. I'm going to go get me a newer car. What's wrong with the car you have right now? Or you're not going to look for any deals. That too. Where you will ordinarily be looking for the best deal possible. Yes. If you got a little extra money, you're probably going to be like, oh, I ain't worried about the deal. I'm going to just pay for it. Yeah. We're going to fly extra. We're gonna fly first class every time. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't need no deals. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, you're going you gonna to mess that money up. You will wind up over, overspending. And ways to manage your money if you get $2 million, if you have millions of dollars, look at investment opportunities. Yeah. That can be low-risk stocks, um, but first, educate yourself yeah. on investments. Or, or just do the, the, the smarter move. If you don't know anything about that, do the smarter move and speak to like a financial advisor. You know, pay but them. you, you still, got $2 million. Pay them 100 bucks an hour to But you help still you out. need to educate yourself because there are financial advisors that will. You'll take advantage of it. You don't know nothing. Exactly. Yeah. So educate yourself on what options that you decide to invest in don't fall into those uh oh scammers no sons of bitches don't them people online are like i Bitcoin. got this right <laughs> i got this course and don't do it don't, don't do, do it. it don't do Mm-mm. it educate yourself on whatever you decide if you're going to purchase properties understand the market understand what your risks are and if, even if you decide that 
you don't want to do that in the country you're in, you can also buy properties outside the country mm -hmm. that can be more affordable and you just outright pay for but it. But the same thing applies like where we live in Ecuador. It's don't just pay for something because someone is because it looks nice yes. and you're just willing to pay whatever they're charging because it's a good chance they're charging a lot more than you need to pay. Yes. So the third option. My option. His option. Yours too. Option C. Getting four thousand dollars weekly for life. This this is this option is guaranteed for life. And what would you do with four thousand dollars a week? Now, so let me just say, of course, your age, lifestyle. This is age dependent. <laughs> this is age dependent. If you're eighty five years old, someone says I give you four thousand dollars a week for life versus two million dollars, I would probably take the two million at that age. Okay. Now. Late forties, ish, or you know even younger, I would definitely take the four thousand a week. Okay. Like I said, it only takes nine years to get to two million. Let me ask you this: So you know when you hit the lottery, you get an option to get the full payout, mm -hmm. or you can get a weekly. Um, we well, don't know if it's monthly, yearly. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, because we never had it's stretched we never out. Hit it. <laughs> stretched out. Yeah. yeah. Why do Why do you think people pick the full payout? Because this is what you're saying. If you're eighty five. You would choose the two million dollars mm -hmm. versus the four thousand. Mm -hmm. But now that you're younger, if you if you're like you say age dependent, if you're in your thirties and forties, you would choose the four thousand. Yeah. So which one would you choose if you hit the lottery? The same? It, you do, do the same? It would it would literally depend on the amount of that lottery. And I, these are all hypothetical, of course. Yes. But just like someone just won that like one point three billion, it was like in Oregon or something. Um, I would probably. And I don't know the terms. I don't know if they're doing it 20 years or they do like 40 years. I don't know how the, how the term is. Mm -hmm. Age dependent. If I was young enough, like a billion dollars spread out even over 20 years is still a lot of money every year. Okay. Like I might go that route because you're going to get more of it. Even though you're going to pay tax on each year, like you're still going to get more as a total right. number. Right, yeah. And it's less likely that you can off all your money all at once now of course it's difficult to do that anyway with 500 million dollars but i would just i don't know it would be difficult it would, it would be a hard choice i'd have to talk to like some financial advisors some lawyers or whatever and they say well look this is what's gonna cost you or you know you might not live to see that and blah blah yeah, blah i think that's the thing. and i don't know if you can tr you don't think you can transfer no, a lottery winner so cannot. yeah you know what check that check that i probably just take the lump sum and that's probably why people do it yeah. but if it's that big a lottery number it's like a billion dollars where I know 1.3 billion where I know I'm going to get like 500 million because they're going to take 40 off top and then do some federal taxes and all yeah. this other stuff. Yeah, I'd probably just take the 500 million. <laughs> but in this case, no, you're talking about four grand a week for life. Because that's Two your, million, I mean, you right. have, that's, that's the option. Two million. Man, I, I can't say it's not a life changing number. It is. Okay. But it depends on where you live, how you live. Yes. Two million in one place don't go the same as two million somewhere else. That's true. But that, somewhere else may not be somewhere you want to live or that be. Is, that's correct. So when it comes to like just planning for life and just having that thought in my head, like, oh, I'm good for the rest of my, I'm good weekly for the rest of my life. For four with right. four thousand dollars. Of course, four thousand dollars now ain't gonna be the same as four thousand dollars in thirty years. It might be only be worth fifteen hundred dollars in thirty years, but okay. it's still every week that you're getting that you don't have that to you don't have to do shit for. Okay, so. I, I said I would choose $4,000 a week. Now, for me, I probably would just quit my job. <laughs> I would, 16 grand a month. Yeah, I would that. probably just quit my job. What what sense does it make for me to go work for someone else? And especially, like you said, if I don't like my job, You got to commute or whatever. Like, what? Why am I, I dealing with this? No, I don't have to. $4,000 a week. And I, they just say it's tax free. She quit for half that. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. You pushing it, okay? Um, but if I made four thousand dollars a week, which is sixteen thousand dollars a month, it we would be in another country. Yeah, if I was just someone just depositing be, four no, grand a week into I'm an just account, saying, yeah, we definitely. would be in another country and we would live our our dreams like we're doing right now on less. However, you know, 
I can still get $2 million, like we discussed early, earlier, within nine years, like nine and a mm -hmm. half years. I can still get $2 million in nine and a half years. I can build my credit score to 850 with $4,000 a week mm -hmm. because I can go out and purchase a loan, get a car, get a, a line of credit, whatever, a boat, and pay that joker off in six months. My credit score is going to increase. I'm going to have a good credit report uh, rating. So all of that can be acquired with me making $4,000 a week. Mm -hmm. I can invest and make the money work for me, whether it's in an IRA, a, a stocks, a CD, whichever. Just know that you have to be financially educated on what you're doing with your money. Just mature, really. Yeah, uh, be mature I, about honestly, it. Honestly, what's crazy is I think that even though we both said the $4,000, if the only options were 850 credit score or $2 million, we definitely take the $2 million yes. because we're – mature enough to make that stretch it's all about maturity. maturity if you have a very mature person i wouldn't even be mad at them for taking the two million a fairly young person who's like i'm gonna take two million i got this is what i got blocked out this is what i'm gonna do blah yeah. blah 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 and they're straight everybody ain't like that though so i'm just saying generally speaking yeah i take four grand now when you take the two million dollar like steven was saying you need to be disciplined you gotta have a you gotta be strategic about what you wanna do and have goals. Now you just take the two million dollars and you like, I'm living it up, I'm wearing my Gucci belt, give me some joys and doing Sit your ass down. It's not that is not it. That's not life. That's not life because once you buy that jewelry, it is depreciated within seconds. Yeah. If That's, it's if it's real. We just chase stuff that is just is not relevant to life. No, it's like why? You know, um, if you decide you want to move, let's just say you're in a house and you get $2 million and you feel like we want to live in a different neighborhood, a more secure, safer neighborhood, that's understandable if you can if you can sell the house you're in or if, let's just say you're renting and mm -hmm. you decide. Don't go out and buy a million dollar house. Yeah, that's dumb because the taxes on that thing is still going to crush you. Yes, you still got to pay taxes. When the other million is tax. gone, what you going to do? So just be strategic about your options. Now, let, let, let's go to realistic <laughs> options for people who are not given these choices, but want to improve their credit. How can you, how can you improve your credit, build your credit on what you have right now? Let's just say you have no credit. The best way... As I stated before, we're not financial advisors. This is just our opinion. And we know there are people out there that, that fix credit and for however w ways they do it. We don't. I, we ain't involved in all that. We don't know. No. We're just talking about the way that we would do it from the normal, average shit that we know. <laughs> I feel like if you go out and get a secured credit card, if you have anywhere from five hundred to two thousand dollars that you can just push aside, put it towards a secured credit card. Because when you have a secure credit card, you're you're borrowed against your money, and it's refundable. Secure a secure credit card helps you with your credit rating, your credit score, and allows you to go rent a car, rent a hotel without using your debit card. I never understood why people use a debit card when they can get a secure credit card. That's a Visa, MasterCard, Visa is accepted everywhere, and you're not putting a hold on your funds in your bank account. The funds will be held on the credit card, and your funds in your bank account are free to do whatever you need to do with it. And what I mean by that is, if you get a secure credit card, whatever you put on there is refundable. Let's just say you put $200, a $200 deposit on your secured credit card so you put it on there and you have it for six months and you're like oh this is working for me you can increase and put more money on that secured credit card and use it and it's re uh, reporting your payments to your account several different cards have several different requirements i know with capital one you can put anywhere from 50 to 200 dollars 
Discover, I think it's like $200. They have no annual fee. A lot of credit cards require an annual fee of $49 up to um, $700. I know AMX, a lot of people don't have AMX, and there's a good reason. Because if you purchase something on your AMX card, you have to pay it in full. Like, if you go out and spend $150 on AMX, you either pay it in full or you pay a fee to split it in payment monthly payments and you don't want to do that so they just take the the economical way and go with a discover or a capital one visa card that doesn't have an annual fee has a minimum um, required deposit that's refundable and build your credit so many people go out here and rent a car and use their debit card and the first thing they say at the rental place there's going to be a hundred and fifty dollar hold on your bank account and if you don't have hundred and fifty dollars to be put on hold against your checking account on your bank account you need to get a credit card you need to do something to help better your situation yeah. we're not saying go ahead and get a credit card and go crazy yeah. we're just saying get a secure credit card because it's, it's my, your money that you're borrowing against building your credit bettering your score for future things that you may want to purchase yeah. And we may have mentioned this before, but if let's say you want to purchase something and it's not a, a big, big ticket item. Right. And you, what we always say is if you're going to go out and buy something that's not big ticket, you should at least be able to afford to pay cash for it. Yes. But if you can put it on credit and pay it off before there's an interest fee, then do that. So what I mean by that is. Let's say you want to buy something like a washer, dryer, or combo. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, you know, sake of argument, it's going to cost $850. Yeah. For both? Together, yes. Okay. You have, because you're smart about your money, mm -hmm. you've saved up the $850. Or at least you've saved maybe half, $500, $500. or so. $500, okay. And you say, okay, I want to buy a washer and dryer. So you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or any place that, you know, sells these things. And... I, we know for just experience, Lowe's and Home Depot are very good about this. Sign up for their card. Yes. If they approve you on the credit, mm -hmm. you get a 10% di discount, yes. on, usually right off top. And they do six months, same as cash. Or you can do 12 months. Sometimes they have 12 months, yes. no interest fee. Yeah. I mean, interest Right, interest and that's what, that's what you're looking for is when do I have to start paying interest? So you get the card. You have at least half that money to pay off the purchase in your bank account. You use that card to buy the washer dryer. You make those payments like you're supposed to. You pay it off in whether it's six months, eight months, whatever it is before the interest starts accruing, where it's not actually costing you any more than what it actually costs. Yeah. And you're building credit. So once you pay it off that item, you can wait, you know, whatever it be, however many months, let's say you need a lawnmower now, or whatever it is you need, yeah. purchase it with that card, Pay it off. Pay it off. Because these are items that you're purchasing items on credit that are actually useful. Yes. That you're you're using. Right. They're not they're not flashy. They're not no. for for show. Now that we've returned after some technical difficulties. So yes. we lost uh nearly ten minutes of footage. So we're gonna try to remember everything that we said that we weren't recording and uh <laughs> start over. <laughs> so I think where we left off was if you have an emergency at home, whether it's a hot water heater, refrigerator, stove, those items are not inexpensive when you have to go and purchase them from wherever, whether you get it from Lowe's, Home Depot, or um, I don't know, back then they had Sears and they had... Yeah, it's crazy. We, we, Montgomery Ward. We're saying, <laughs> we're referring to Sears as back then, but yeah. Crazy. Sometimes having a store credit card or just a credit card is beneficial because you don't have to pull money out of your account, yeah. like at, in a lump sum, to pay for that item. Yeah, and it's just don't let people tell you that it's not good to have a credit card. It's no. just the good thing about having a credit card is, like you said, emergencies. Emergencies. The bad thing is that if you're irresponsible with making payments or irresponsible with the things that you buy on a purchase on a credit card. Right. Because there's a difference between purchasing something that you need versus something that you want. Those emergencies can happen anywhere. Like if you're at an airport mm -hmm. 
and you're stuck and or they're just saying they're not flying out and you're two hours away from your destination, yeah. you can rent a car. And like we said before, having a debit card may not be an option because if you don't have enough money in your account to rent that car to get where you're going, yeah. that credit card can come in handy. Also, if your credit card is maxed out, yeah, you it's, ain't doing shit anyway. <laughs> you're stuck. So you need to be disciplined. It's responsible. Be responsible. Yeah. Make good choices. And just know having a credit card, having good credit can be very beneficial to doing some things that you may not want to just put all your money into. Yeah. So understand that sometimes the thing that you purchase is actually useful and having that credit card in case of emergency can really come in handy. So don't let, don't let people tell you that, oh, you don't need credit card. Yeah. You do. You just got to be responsible. Yeah, you need to be responsible. And like we said, if you got a lot, a large sum of money in your account and you're like, hey, I don't need a credit card, you don't need a credit card. This whole, this whole conversation is irrelevant. <laughs> you don't need a credit card. But for if you're trying to build credit, like we said before, you can open a secure credit card and borrow against your own money. And eventually, you know, I would think that if you do do a secure credit credit card and you make on-time payments, I'm pretty sure that credit company will allow you to open a regular credit card and you may have a higher credit um, uh, credit limit. Yeah. You know, you may start off with $500 and wind up being at $5,000, maybe at $10,000, you know. 20. Just don't don't mess it up. Yeah, like he said previously, don't go out there and just spend ten grand because you got a ten thousand dollar credit card limit, right. and then you can't pay it off. Or just do something dumb with it. Cause taking somebody's dumb advice, don't just be smart about it. And yeah, that's the whole point of this conversation is don't be stupid. Yes. We talked about the choices that we would make. We both chose the four thousand dollars a week. We what? feel like it's just a better idea right for us but if you're smart and you know the type of person that can take two million and make something out of it hey you know by all means but i think the last option should be the credit score because you can fix your credit score with either two million dollars or four thousand dollars a week so don't worry about that i want to know honestly what y'all would do yes what option would you take like let us know in the comments and why yeah why would you choose that option if it is an 850 um, credit score and because you have the money, whatever the case may be, right. if that's your if choice. that's your choice, we want to know. We want to exactly. know why. Because then I might be like, oh, you know what? Maybe I do with 850 credit score. No, nah, I don't know. I don't care because I made my payments on time. So Yeah, and yeah. we don't screw off with the money. and it's, we, we pay for things on the cards that we can afford to actually pay for. We have the cards so that we can keep credit because we're down here in South America and... Our credit score don't mean nothing. It don't mean a hill of beans, as my mom would say, <laughs> down here. But we want to keep it. You never know for in case of emergency. We want to keep a decent credit score. Right. If I got to show up at the airport on a dime, here you go. Yeah. Put it on the card. Yep. And let's fly up out of here. So. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, subscribe. We want to try to do more of these little fun videos and keep everyone entertained and keep ourselves busy so we're not bored. And, and try to give you some information on what we think, you know, would be the best option. But, yeah. of course, that's our opinion. Our two cents. And our views. And, therefore, we hope you enjoy. Yeah, because our two cents ain't worth a wood nickel, as somebody might say back in the day. I've never heard that before, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great day. See you later. Bye. Bye.